So, third time, I hope it works. Hello everyone, I am Erika of BeadingSchool.com and you are watching No One Has to Bead Alone, my weekly open beading workshop to make sure that every beader all around the world has company. Today we are going to work on the Agadir, Agadir beaded bead designed by my friend Zuzi. And I hope that you can see me and hear me because this is the third time already that I try to go online and it was not working out well. And I hope it is okay now. I see Carrie, I see Robin, I see Sarah, I see Kata and Betty and Liv and Ula and Malia and Margarete and Zuska and Lutka and Elena. So I think it's all right on YouTube and on Facebook too. Elena, Sherry, Marcy, Cindy, Gail, Carol, Angelica, Jill, Liv, Susan, Facebook user friend, Dali, Erica Gisela. Angelica is back from Marrakesh. She felt inspired so much by the Jardin Majorelle collection, actually, that she flew to Morocco to see it. And I can't wait to see to hear about your adventures, Angelica. Happy Easter weekend, everyone. Terry and many of you are saying happy Easter and in the holidays are coming up. So I would like to wish you all a happy Easter. Dawn actually is celebrating her birthday, wishing you the happiest birthday, Dawn, and all the best for the coming year. I hope that you have a beautiful day today. Corinne is also here, Yosin. And Linda, Shirley, Joanna. And mentioning Easter holidays, guess what? Today I received a package. And as some of you know, hopefully many of you know, the ladies in the beading school treasury, they prepared some surprises for you. And they were so sweet that when they sent me a little uh, package uh, this week, so I can uh, prepare some new things, then they also included one of those little surprises for me in my package. And I have to show you this because it's just so cool that the surprise it it is a sparkly and sweet surprise so there is a chocolate easter egg and then there is a pair of forget-me-not cabochons and what i love about it that the color of the egg and the cabochons are matching. And I saw pictures, I'm not sure if 100% everything is matching, but I saw pictures that they try to like match to red to red and blue to blue, and that's, that's just so cute. And for those of you who don't know about it yet, so to celebrate all the creative energy returning to us with the warm, warmer, hopefully soon, <laughs> warmer springtime days and to thank you for everything that you bring to the beading school club your positivity and energy and compassion this week from coffee time with erica until next week's coffee time with erica 5 p.m central european time if you decide to place an order through the beading school bead shop it, uh, then everyone will receive a little sweet sparkly surprise it doesn't matter how big your order is we have prepared a sweet surprise for every reader who decides to visit us in the beach of this week and yeah i'm looking forward to have this after the after the class and there is something more waiting for you also and that will start just after today's class and i will tell you more about it 
later. And in the meanwhile, yeah, Angelica says also belated birthday to Zuzi as well. Indeed, yesterday was Zuzi's birthday. And today, actually, she was in uh, the Beading School Treasury. Usually she's working from home since she lives uh, further away. But today she was there, so they could celebrate together also. Ellie is here and Antoinette and Sherry and Tanya. And Tanya says, it looks like I might be able to join the reading school. And that is fantastic, Tanya. We are looking forward to have you. And Eve is here. Eve would like to get a closer look of the earrings. These are designed by Ruxandra. And they are called Tulip Eye. And you can find the tutorial in the bead shop. They don't focus well, the camera does not focus well on them, but they are super nice and perfect for springtime. <gasps> Matching my tulips. <laughs> and yeah, I got them as a present from Veronica. And Faye is here and Louisa and Andrea. And Mary is back and Lex is here and Irene is here and Irene is asking what about the event? Yes, unfortunately, I'm having trouble again, technical trouble. So if someone would be that nice and post the link to the group, that would be fantastic to the event. I had to restart now three times to make it work, and I'm so sorry about it. <laughs> and then Susan is here. Corinne is asking, any news about the six times eight millimeter cabochons? Dear Corinne, we restocked some of the colors this week. Not all of them uh, arrived yet, but what arrived, everything is back. Also the lotus flower cabochons, the 14 millimeters that you need for this one and soon more colors will hopefully arrive. Marta is here also and Amy and Angelica thank you so much for posting the link for Eve and Jen is here and Leslie is here and Susie is here, birthday girl is here, we were talking about you. <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad that you are safely at home now and Let's start beading. Actually, today someone wrote that the Agadir beaded bead, in fact, looks a bit like a jeweled, bejeweled Easter egg, like a Fabergé. And I think that's so true. And uh, uh, so, lovely. To, uh, now, let's start beading. And at the end, I would like to get back to your questions. I see more questions coming up, but now let's start beading. And then I would like to ask you to like focus on the Agadir beaded bead now. And then at the end, you will again have a chance to ask any questions that you might have. And uh, it will be my pleasure to answer everything. So the Agadir beaded bead, it is a design by Zuzi and she beaded it using components and beads from the Jardin Majorelle collection. It is a 3D structure made with right angle weave and then decorated with seed beads and rhinestones. It's a super cute and fast design and I think you will love it. I already have half a pair ready and can't wait to continue. So let's look at the material list and let's see what do you need. In the meanwhile, please navigate to no one has to be the long.com where you can download the PDF tutorial that helps you to follow the workshop. You can print it, you can save it to your computer for later. As always, 
you have uh, two options and you can either support the broadcast by buying the tutorial for five euros and thank you so much for doing that many of you or you can download the tutorial as a gift from beading school if you need your helping hand at the moment you need your helping hand at the moment in any case i really really appreciate if you decide to share it if you decide to uh, to tell your beading friends about it because it really helps us and it's super important that uh, that we get the word out about beading school so we can continue bringing you all the classes and everything so thank you everyone for doing that special shout out for Corinne who always makes sure to share the news so while you are downloading the tutorial, also special shout out to Corinne to get well. She has COVID again. So while you are downloading the tutorial, let's see the material list. You will need a bunch of four millimeter fire polished beads for one beaded bead, five pieces for a pair. 10 pieces. You will also need some of the super tiny 2.8 millimeter Suwon rhinestones from Preciosa. These are also called, called Rose Chaton Montes. You can also use the 4 millimeter version and in that case you will need to add only one seed bead next to them instead of two. You will need three and four millimeter bicone beads from Preciosa and from this you will need from one uh, piece, ten pi one beaded bead, 10 pieces for a pair 20 pieces. For the rhinestone I forgot to say you need five for one beaded bead so 10 for a pair and then you will also need seed beads, no Miyuki Delica this time, you will only need round seed beads in sizes 15 and sizes 11. Only a few pieces, especially the size 11s. So if you have a color where only a few pieces are left, then this is perfect for it. So let's start beading. I will switch now to my second camera and please keep every finger and every toe crossed that it works because I am getting so frustrated with technology. <laughs> So hopefully you can see me and hopefully you can hear me. Please let me know before we would start. I would like to show you my own version of the beaded bead. We got these super cool frames with the chain during the Art Deco team because I think it remind um, it can remind us of a diamond and it's just so sleek and elegant. And I had some leftovers at home from that time, so I I uh, discovered that actually my beaded bead fits the frame perfectly. And then I added a bow tie ear stud with cubic zirconia. So this is how I made it. And since I did not have eye pins or head pins at home, then I attached the beaded bead with thread and needle and with some extra size 15 seed beads. So don't worry, even if you don't have at the moment pins at home, you can make it work. So ladies, do you have a question about the material list? In the meanwhile, Tanya and Malia say that the sound is good and Teresa joined us. So if you don't have any questions, then let's get started. So we will start by building right angle weave uh, squares. It means I'm working with my usual size 11 tulip beading needle 
and with my uh, 0 0.12 millimeter fire line, and then I pick up four beads, two four millimeter fire polished beads, and two four millimeter preciosa bicone beads interchangeably. So one fire polished, one bicone, one fire polished, one bicone. And these will be the sides of my little square. The side walls will be the fire polished beads and the uh, top and the bottom, the ceiling and the uh, floor will be the Preciosa bicons. I bead through all four beads one more time and then I bead through the first fire polished bead one more time. So when I pull my thread then I see that I have just made a little square and this is my first right angle weave unit. And Claudia is here and Katie is here, Katie. Katie, it's so good to see you, even if you are not beading yet, but it's so good to see you. And then in step two, and a few consecutive steps, we will continue beading more right angle weave units. All together, we will, be, we will have five units. However, be careful because when you are beading the fifth one, then that needs to be joined to the very first unit. So it's like four ordinary units and the fifth one, which is a connection. To do that, I am now exiting a fire polished bead and then I picked up a bicone, fire polished bead, bicone. All the same size, these are all four millimeter beads. I bead through the fire polished bead one more time that I was exiting at the beginning. This wall bead. This is part of the first and the second unit too. So I have now two right angle weave units. However, I need to finish by exiting a fire polished bead on the other side. Make sure to keep good tension. If you have a bit of trouble holding a good thread tension, then I would like to recommend to repeat the thread pass through the whole uh, second unit and then get into position for the third unit. So this is how we will continue. Now we have one wall of the third right angle weave unit already. And then we pick up bicone, fire polished bead, bicone. And then we bead through the fire polished bead that we started out from for a third time. And then I again want to get into position to build the fourth unit. Please let me know Ladies, how is it going? Right angle weave can be super easy if you already, if you have already done it, but it can also be tricky if it is only your first or second time. So please let me know how is it going. And Nancy joined us and Irina. And Malia is asking if this is the Capri two times a B bicone, and it is indeed. And then I'm beading my fourth unit. It's actually the same strat pass as before. And Betty says she loves the colors. Thank you. This is still everything, uh, Jardim Majorelle. And Gisela says that it's going all right for her. 
wonderful. So now I have five units. Uh, sorry, four units, one, two, three, four, but already five fire polished beads in a row. So that means that I don't need the fire polished beads anymore. However, when I count the bicons that are in one level, so these are the floor beads, these are the ceiling beads, then I see one, two, three, four, only four. One is missing. However, I will not pick up any more of the fire polished beads because I already have the five. So I pick up a bicon and I bead through the very first fire polished bead. So they are now connected on one side and then I pick up another bicon and I bead through the fire polished that I was just exiting before connecting them. And that pulls the first and the last unit uh, together. So all I need to do is to repeat the thread pass to make the connection a bit stronger. And then I want to finish by exiting a fire polished bead. So now when I count my beads, I have five bicons on the top, I have five fire polished beads as the side beads, and I have five bicons at the bottom. So please, ladies, let me know how is it going. Deb is here. Deb is wishing Happy Easter. Wendy is popping in to say hi. Samia is here. And Brit Marie is here. Brit Marie had a stressful day. I hope that now after work it is possible to calm down a little bit and you can enjoy a few free days now over the holidays. And Lita is also saying hello. So if it's going all right for now, then let's see what's happening in step six. This can become a little bit squishy. So I don't recommend, by the way, uh, using something else than Fireline. And if you feel like it is not stirred enough, then you can always repeat the thread passes. To start this step, I beaded through a, a bicon bead. I pick up a size 11 seed bead and, oh, sorry, no, uh, I start, uh, I'm exiting the bicon, this four millimeter bicon bead, and then I pick up a group of three millimeter bicon a size 11 seed bead and another three millimeter bicon. I bead through the same four millimeter Preciosa bicon one more time. So it looks like as if I have added a little roof on top of the four millimeter, four millimeter bicon. So it's actually also a kind of a rectangle. However, the top uh, unit is so small that that's because it looks like a triangle, but it is the same, same stitch as before with four beads. Now to continue to get into position for the next one, I pick up another round 11 and I bead through the next four millimeter bicone bead. However, now I already have one bicon here that I want to use. So instead of three new beads, I pick up only one three millimeter bicon and a size 11 seed bead. 
and I bid through this bicon that I picked up in the previous step, and also through the four millimeter bicon that I was exiting just now. This is how it looks like. The bicon on the left side is a little bit lighter because uh, it means that it was already added during the previous step. And then to get in position for the next one, I pick up a round 11 seed bead and I bead through the next bicon bead. And this is how I uh, continue two more times. And then the third time will be a little bit different. Robin is watching now because this is ex actually her first right angle weave. Oh, then it's really a good idea to study it first and then give it a go. And please don't worry, it's actually not hard. It's just, yeah, requires a little bit of attention to make sure that your thread path is correct and good tension or repeating the thread path is. Angelica says, I'm a bit ahead and this is a thread eater. It is. <gasps> it is indeed. Right angle weave always. Cubic right angle weave is even worse. <laughs> Facebook user friend is wishing everyone beautiful Easter. And Sharon is here. Welcome, Sharon. So I'm doing the same for a fourth time. So I'm exiting a four millimeter bicon. I picked up a three millimeter bicon and the round 11 seed bead. Then I bead through a previously picked up three millimeter bicon and the four millimeter bicon that I was just exiting. To get in position for the final step here, I picked up a round 11 seed bead and I bead through the last four millimeter bicon without a decoration. Oh, and Ginny remembers the right angle weave classes, which I taught a few years back in the seed beads and more group. That was a fun time actually. And it felt good to like go through a technique from beginning to more complicated uh, variations and I will go on back because I was talking and I did not explain what I was doing. So to add a roof over the last bicon bead, I beaded up through uh, the three millimeter bicon on its right side. I pick up a size 11 seed bead, and then I bead down through the three millimeter bicon on the left side of the four millimeter one. And then I bead through the four millimeter bicon once again. To finish this, again, I pick up a size 11 seed bead I bead through the four millimeter bicon that is the next one. And then I want to bead up through a three millimeter bicon and turn to the right by beading through a size 11 seed bead on top of it. And Wendy says, once you get it, it is such a versatile stitch. And I could not agree more with Wendy. It requires a bit of like work at the beginning, but then you can do so many nice things with it. So I'm up. And then uh, on in the top row, and I will now connect the seed beads and this will give a lot more sturdiness to the beaded bead. 
Some of you ladies are already finished. Sarah says, my first are ready. My God, such a cute motif, isn't it? I love it, absolutely. Irene says, I'm ahead and this is adorable and so sparkly. So here I actually, okay, Claudia says, I lost you. You lost me like technically like beading or the video froze for you. If technique, then I can show that last part one more time if you would like to. Oh, Marta says, I remember the dragonfly body. That was a super fun one. Bex says, right angle weave and its variants are my absolute favorite stitches. And Katty says, looking forward to the pics of these beauties. Have a nice evening and Easter. Thank you, dear Katty, for stopping by. Take care and big hugs to Will and also to Tanya, of course. So I don't see an answer yet from Claudia. Hope she's doing all right with beading. So now I would like to connect the seed beads and here I have a little difference when I compare it to Susie's original version. It depends on your personal style, but at this moment, before adding the smaller beads, I like to connect the size 11 seed beads to each other. I think my tension might have been a little bit looser than Susie's, but when I did the first beaded bead, then for me, it did not get right if I did not connect it, but it might work differently for you. So you can you can uh, try both ways. So how Zuzi is doing it, that immediately she is filling in size 15 seed beads in between the size 11s, and that's how she's connecting them. And for me, it works better in a way that I connect it first all the size 11s, and then I repeat the thread path. And I add size 15s in between the size 11s. Four and five. And Bonnie is here and Bonnie says, this looked complicated, but it's not now we are beading it together. Bonnie, I'm so, so, so uh, happy for you that it, it became easier as you see what's happening. And Crystal is here. Hi, Crystal. Can we connect the end product to more? Do you mean like more beaded beads to each other? Absolutely. We did a few weeks, few maybe like one and a half weeks back, Zeus is uh, another beaded bead, the Shaf uh, And there are many, many, many beautiful versions of connected beaded beads into necklaces and bracelets. I recommend looking it up in the, in the beading school uh, Facebook club. And Susie says, you can also make substitutions. Three millimeter fire polished beads work well instead of bicons if you don't have enough beads. And I think that's a great idea. Or we could also go bigger. I was thinking when I was beading it that I would love to try it uh, with more units on top of each other. So beading it as it is, but then switch maybe to six millimeter beads to give it like a longer body. And now, first half of the beaded bead is ready. And what I need to do is 
that I need to get on the other side to make the same exactly. So I bead it down through a three millimeter bicone. I bead through a four millimeter bicone. When you are working with right angle weave or it's sister stitches, the cubic right angle weave or the prismatic right angle weave, then you never go straight, but you always take right angles when you want to get somewhere. So here, I bead through a four millimeter fire polished bead. And then, let's see what's happening. So now basically, I'm repeating the same on the other side. So exiting a four millimeter bicone bead, I pick up three millimeter bicone, size 11, three millimeter bicone, and then I bead through the four millimeter bicone again. I pick up a size 11 seed bead, and then I bead through the next four millimeter bicone. Now I want to join this roof unit to the one that I have already added. So I don't pick up three new beads, only two, a bicon and a size 11 seed bead. And I use the nearest three millimeter bicon from the first roof section that I have added. So now I have the four beads again, one, two, three, four. And to get to the next four millimeter bicone, I pick up a round 11 and I bead through that four millimeter bicone. And this is how I continue all around. Always picking up two new beads because I already have two in place adding a size 11 seed bead in between two bicones. And again. And now I am at the fifth unit, which already has here a three millimeter bicon that I can use, another three millimeter bicon that I can use, a four millimeter bicon, and I need to add only the single four millimeter, uh, size 11 seed bead on top of it. And then I see that still here there is a gap. So I fill in my last size 11 seed bead. Yo, since says she has tension trouble, Zuzi is indeed advising her to repeat the thread pass. And I agree with Zuzi. And I would recommend already repeating the thread passes in the first steps you've seen. When you are building this middle part with the four millimeter fire polished beads and the four millimeter bicons, repeat everything that you do there unit by unit, and that will give you a strong base. Now I am connecting first the size 11 seed beads to each other. And then just as before, I add the size 15s in between. And Joan is here and she says she will be on the replay to continue beading so she can focus. And Wendy also says, I always have to watch all the way through once, then watch replay and rewind multiple times. And thank you for sharing that, Wendy. We are, some of us are faster, some of us are, uh, need more time to absorb or just have different preferences. 
you can always do it in a way that suits you the most. The lives are here every week. Uh, and then the recordings stay online so you can also go back to it as many times and stop it and watch it again, watch it slower, watch it faster as you like. So I have my blingy Easter egg base ready and now comes the decoration part. And Yosin sa uh, face says that for this bead you could also use a thicker fire line, and that's a super good advice, Faye. Brit Marie was just about asking about the tension. Amy is wishing wonderful holidays, wonderful holidays to you too, Amy, and more pleasure. <laughs> So let's see how does the decoration go. I always love the decorating part. <laughs> so to get into position for the decorations, I bead down through a three millimeter bicone. I turn to the right through a four millimeter bicone and I also bead through a size 11 seed bead which is nestling in between two four millimeter bicone beads. Now I will be adding the tiny Preciosa Suvon rhinestones. I will tell you a secret. I will have only four of the chrysolite opals, but I will add a crystal AB and it will be an extra sparkly touch making my beaded bead unique. <laughs> and to do that, I'm going to add groups of beads with a rhinestone in the middle, diagonally in between two size 11 seed beads. So I'm exiting a size 11 seed bead. I pick up two round 15s. I pick up a tiny rhinestone and another two size 15s. Now I bead through the next one, but in the bottom row. So I, I was exiting this one in the top row before picking up the beads, but then after picking them up, I beaded through one in the bottom row. So always in a diagonal. Now the diagonal, will climb up to the top again, but I pick up the same. Two size 15s, a tiny rhinestone, and two more size 15s. And now I bead through, through the bead in the top floor. And Sarah says, the tension gets much better when you connect the size 11s first before you put the size 15s between on the top and bottom. Thank you for trying both ways, Sarah, and letting us know. And Angelica also has an advice. After decoration, I had a problem with the four millimeter fire polish beads collapsing inside the bead. But I found that adding a thread pass, attaching the four millimeter fire polish to the top and bottom uh, R11s helped to push it nicely out again. I posted a picture in the Weeding School Club. Thank you so much, Angelica. And Sharon says, I don't typically like beaded beads, but this one is beautiful with all its sparkle and shine. Nice design, Zuzi. Oh, I'm happy that you like it, Sharon. And now I continue adding my diagonals. So always two size 15s rhinestone to size 15, 15s, always nicely diagonally. 
So you will do this five times. I'm doing now the fifth section where I have a crystal AB rhinestone instead of the chrysalid opal because I really can't find any more chrysalid opals. So this is how it looks like at the moment. And in the next step, I'm going to complete the diagonals into small crosses. So I'm exiting now a size 11 and I pick up two pieces of size 15s and I bead through the open hole of the tiny rhinestone that is already there. So it has three legs now. I pick up two more size 15s and then I bead through the next size 11. So my first little cross with a tiny rhinestone in the middle is ready. And this is exactly how I bead all around. So ladies, since we are getting close to finishing the beaded bead, please let me know. Do you have any questions about this? Uh, design, about the material, about the stitches, was there something hard, how did it click, if it was like your first time beading right angle weave, was there something that helped you to understand how it's working, that might also help your fellow beaders if you shared it with them. Corinne says, I love it. Oh, happy for you, Corinne. I hope you don't have any nasty side effects that would prevent you from enjoying your beads these days. <laughs> Angelica says, this reignited my interest in right angle weave. Oh, that's so nice, Angelica. There are so many, many possibilities in this stitch. You can bezel cabochons with right angle weave. You can build 3D objects like this. You can bead a 2D flat base and then decorate it further with all kinds of other beads. So there are lots and lots of possibilities, really. Irena says, I made a teeny tiny Fabergé egg. I love it. Should I have received bags for the earring studs? These come without the bags. Uh, we will have soon the plastic ones available, the silicone ones for them. And John says, I missed the rhinestone size. Is that a three millimeter one? So this is a 2.8 millimeter, nearly three millimeter big. Angelica thinks about switching to Nemo for right angle weave. Mm, I know that right angle weave is a thread eater try it but i don't like thread for okay i don't like thread for anything i like fireline i'm a fireline girl but for right angle weave the don't like i would it's a very mild version of how i feel about thread when it comes to right angle weave <laughs> but again it is completely different for different beaters so it might work for you And Brit Marie says that this might be her first beaded weed. Exciting times. And Martha says, 
it's so helpful to see your bead and to hear your directions at the same time. I will bead and watch my bead uh, at the same time. I'm looking forward to see your smart time. It's always curious of your colors. Corinne has a headache. Oh, I hope it passes soon. And lovely is, please, if you have now other questions, not only about beading Agadir, then please keep them coming. Now that we finished the beaded bead, I'm happy to return to any kind of topics that you would like to hear about. Dawn is asking about your experience with watching on Facebook. Marcia also says that her tension was a little loose at the beginning and repeated thread passes to tighten it up. Ula also says that Nemo might be too soft. Bex also says that with Fireline you get a better result. Oh, and Angelica says, I just want to say how happy I am about the Tillary stock. Angelica, I'm happy that you are happy. <laughs> so even, so if, uh, if uh, other fellow beaders don't know it yet, then since we are also using Tila beads during this month, then today, we did a big restock of Tila beads. So except two, three colors, everything was back in stock before the before the workshop today. Also three out of the four Tila bundles were back in stock. The, uh, the bundles, they bring you on one hand comfy bead shopping and on the other hand, they, they help you to save 10%. So it's a good investment. And Wendy is sharing also her experience about Russian leaves that she did with Nemo and it was too floppy, unfortunately. Louise is going back to sleep now in New Zealand. And Sharon can't wait to be this. And... Uh, there was one question which I did not answer yet, I think. Someone was asking about rocket beads, if we will have them back in stock. We will, but it takes time. The problem with rocket beads is that these bigger pressed glass beads, as we learned from our friends in the Crystal Volley, they are not pressed by machines, but they are hand pressed. And there are fewer and fewer people in the beading industry who can actually do that and fewer and fewer machines, actually. And we need to, like, wait until they have time and capacity for the rocket beads again. But we want to have them. And we are, like, still researching the opportunities to have more colors but it is a problematic one, unfortunately, but one that I love to use and I have many ideas for, so it's on our mind all the time. And Margarete is asking about the possibility to know when Fireline will be back in stock. Margarete, can you please send us a question to info at beadingschool.com so we can help you? because then I can look, we can look into the sheets that what is on the way, when is it scheduled and help you better. So it's past six o'clock. So it's time also to tell you, haha, good for those who are still with me, some 10 beaders left since we stopped beating since I stopped beating and they left before I will tell you about, about the other surprise that we prepared for you. So, I love spring. I told you already. And this time, 
there are some sparkly butterflies flying to the bidding school treasury together with springtime starting now. And they started to settle in the treasure in the treasury already at six o'clock. It means that during the weekend, starting from now, there uh, will be butterfly surprises popping up in the bead shop at beadingschool.com. They will look like products, but in fact, every one of these surprises is hiding three colorful butterflies. And they are limited in number. There are, I think, 33 butterflies flying to the bead shop. They will come up in different times. So I know that at six o'clock now, three butterflies settled. And then a little bit later, somewhere else, another butterfly will settle and one more and one more and one more. And all during the weekend, the 33 butterflies will settle in the beading school bead shop. You can click through all the categories and try to find the butterfly. They are elusive. They will fly away fast as I know you. And the first beader who finds a specific butterfly hiding somewhere can put the butterfly in her shopping basket and check out with it as if it was a product. It's not a product, it's a butterfly. <laughs> so every butterfly can be found only once and the first beater to grab it will receive it with her next package. What is super important that every beater can have only one butterfly. So if you find two that are available, then I kindly ask you, to grab only one butterfly. If you grab two, we will still send you only one and the second one will be lost to everyone. So the butterflies are waiting for you. There is, as Kata says, a high risk of crashing the website. So please be patient with it <laughs> and enjoy searching for the butterflies. They are, they are super beautiful. So do you have any questions about the butterflies? Oh, and Zuzi says, encouraged by seeing how you love beaded beads, I think about one from Tilas. Do that, Zuzi, please. <laughs> Brit Marie also says, crash time. So ladies, if you don't have any more questions left, then I would like to just thank you for the lovely time today. Wishing you happy Easter holidays, a nice relaxing time for the weekend and a kind reminder, uh, don't forget about the gifts. If you place an order, then you will receive a sweet, sparkly surprise. It is our thank you for being here with us. And during the last weeks, many of you were asking for the rectangle cabochons and the lotus flower cabochon that you need for the sassifraga uh, motif. Most of the colors are we're back. Some, uh, most of the colors from the lotus flower were, were, were back and also some from the rectangle. So they are available again. Another old time favorite, the star shaped crystal connectors were also restocked. Still some colors available after two days. And something super important about next week, on Tuesday, I am looking forward to meet you again for Coffee Time with Erica. And after talking so much about how can you combine different motifs into a bracelet, into a uh, necklace, and so on, we will research the possibility what you can do if you have only one motif. So let's meet 
and make some brooches this time. And then next Friday, we will have an offline, no one has to be the one. That means that there will be, we will bring you another super cute design, this time made by our friend Ruxandra. You need a tila bead for this too. Uh, and we will post the PDF tutorial. However, there won't be a video next week. So it's the 7 plus 7, 14th of April, I think. So that will be an offline, no one has to be the one session with Ruxandra's Fontaine of Jardin Majorelle. You will need three millimeter bicone beads. You will need wax solos, Miyuki slender bugles, and a tila bead for it. You will also need some seed beads. And that's it. A super cute motive is waiting for you. Thank you so much again and wishing you a peaceful, relaxing time. Happy Easter. Bye-bye.